Today I'm entering into a new world. Well, for me, I'm cooking Italian. I'm just not gonna give up without a fight. So it is time to introduce a new cookbook to this series. So a drum roll will not be necessary. It's only a cookbook. Next one up is The Essentials of Classic Italian Cooking from Marcella Hazan. I actually bought this book a few years ago based on the recommendation of some of you. You're telling me she's like the Italian version of Julia Child. So when I heard that, I raced to the store, I bought it. And it's been sitting on my bookshelf ever since. Unopened, brand new, forgotten, until this moment. So yeah, it's great to finally uh, pay a little attention to it. <laughs> Similar to what Julia Child did with introducing French cuisine to North America, that's kind of what Marcella Hazan did with classic Italian cooking and these recipes and this cookbook. So props. I'm gonna make one of her most famous recipes. It's this, tomato sauce with onions and butter. This is the simplest of all sauces to make and none has a purer, more irresistibly sweet tomato taste. I have known people to skip the pasta and eat the sauce directly out of the pot with a spoon. We're not gonna skip the pasta. In fact, I'm gonna make, uh, she says here, this is an unsurpassed sauce for potato gnocchi. Gnocchi. Embarrass myself too many times on this channel with that word. Gnocchi. What is gnocchi? The gnocchi. We're making gnocchi, gnocchi, gnocchi. The longest looking gnocchi I've ever seen. Anyway, I'm gonna make that from scratch along with the tomato sauce. It's gonna be great. You should stick around. Let's get to work. Let's start with the tomatoes. Use fresh, naturally and fully ripened plum tomatoes, if available. These are fresh, plum, Roma tomatoes. Alternatively, you could use canned imported Italian tomatoes, but I wanted to try with the ripe stuff today. You know? Now, once the water starts boiling into a saucepan that's much too small for this task, I'm gonna add in the tomatoes. One minute. Drain the tomatoes in a conveniently placed colander next to it, right there. Once they are cool enough to handle, skin them. And just like that, off it goes. Easy peeling, easy peeling. I'm gonna wash them in cold water, cut them lengthwise and remove the stem. Put them into the saucepan, cover on medium heat. 10 minutes. Got a new toy over here, kitchen tool. It's a food mill. First heard about them in Julia's cookbook. She's always kind of talking about them, but I found a way out of it. I always used an immersion blender instead. But Marcella, <laughs> I'm gonna need one for the tomato sauce and for the gnocchi. What is gnocchi? So I'm like, you know what? Just pick it up. Figure out how to use it on the day. Uh, do I need to give it a name? The food mill. Mill. House. Mill house. <laughs> Let's call it mill house. Bowl me. Thank you. And what I do is this. The disc with the largest holes and then the rotating handle. Lovely. Transfer the tomatoes with any of the juices to the mill. Okay. Oh. Slow down. Holy shit. What an unfortunate turn of events. So clockwise motion to push the food through. What have I bought? This doesn't work. Don't know how to use a food mill. I thought this would be the easiest thing in the world to use, but evidently I am uh, a bit slow. I'm sure everyone already knew that. With the disc with the largest holes, the thing is the seeds are going through the holes. I don't know if I want the seeds in my tomato sauce. I'm gonna pick one where the seeds do not go through it. If that's the wrong call, then I'm so sorry. So apparently clockwise is the way to do it. I think it's working. Holy cow, I think it's working. Is it working? Go clockwise, and if it's not going through, then I go counterclockwise to loosen it, and then I go clockwise. Let's keep it going, Millhouse, let's do it. Before anyone tells me that you don't have to peel the tomatoes before you pass them through the food mill. I know that. Probably just do this over the pot that I'm gonna cook the tomato sauce in. But um, yeah, I just wanna crawl before I can walk. Thank you very much. This is, thing is just, uh, honestly, this thing is just a lot of work. I'm choosing to grab some of these tomato pieces that didn't make their way through. And yeah, there'll be a couple seeds in my sauce, just a few, but not as many as there was gonna be. Chop roughly. 
I got a yellow onion. Peel it up. You'd probably think, well, maybe you should dice it up, mince it up. No, actually. All I'm doing is splitting it in half. One medium onion peeled and cut in half. That's it. In the saucepan, five tablespoons of butter. The onion, just add the onion. And then salt, but she doesn't tell me how much, so just to, uh, to your liking, to taste. So bring it over here into a slow but a slow but steady simmer, uncovered for 45 minutes. But I'll keep watching it and whatnot, you know, stirring it from time to time, mashing any large pieces of tomato in the pan with the back of a wooden spoon. I'll do all of that. Okay, so we're gonna move on to our potato gnocchi. Gnocchi. You got there. The word gnocco in Italian means a little lump, such as the one that might be raised by sharply knocking your head against a hard object. I'm not gonna do that. Gastronomically speaking, however, gnocchi should be anything but lumpish. The essential characteristic of well-made gnocchi is that it be fluffy and light. And the potato choice for this is critical. It's not a baking potato, we need a boiling potato, something that's waxy. These are Yukon gold potatoes. Waxy. Get the big old Dutch oven back in the house. Fill it up with water. The water's boiling, I'm gonna drop in the potatoes and I'm gonna cook these until they're tender. It's after 20 minutes, let's remove these patatskis. While the potatoes are still hot, uh, I gotta peel the skin. And it's easy peeling, just like the tomatoes. Okay, so here comes Mailhouse. Thank you. And yeah, we're gonna puree these potatoes while they're still warm. All right, this works great. Keep it going. Okay, I'm getting the hang of this thing. Here, add another potato. Remember the first time I ever made gnocchi? Uh, was like, I don't know, five years ago on this channel. I was mashing the potatoes with a little fork and my finished product had all these little potato chunks in it. The recipe actually said that if I had a ricer, I would, I would put the potatoes through the ricer, but since I don't have a ricer, I figured I could just mash them. It's proving to be such a pain in the ass, I should have just picked up a ricer. We go clockwise, and once everything gets jammed up in there, I go counterclockwise. We got it. I have one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. I'm gonna add most of it now. I'll do that and hold the phone and we knead into a smooth mixture. So some potatoes absorb less flour than others, so it's best not to add all the flour until you know exactly how much they will take. Oh, you know, hoping everyone's okay out there. Stop adding flour when the mixture has become soft and smooth. So I gotta lightly flour my surface. People have been complaining about how I do this, so I'm gonna do it a little more liberally this time. Okay, yeah, you know who you are. Into two. Sausage-like roll about one inch thick. And slice into three quarters of an inch pieces. So that will be my template. Making sure we're always dusting our hands with flour before we handle them. I think what I'm gonna do is just flour up some wax paper here and get these guys on there until I need them. I have a little more I gotta do here. With the index finger of your other hand, hold one of the cut pieces against the inside of the curve of the fork, just below the tip of the prongs. At the same time that you are pressing the piece against the prongs, flip it away from the tip and in the direction of the fork's handle. Oh yeah, yes! Marcella! Yeah, and then you get little grooves in there. Okay, this is a, this is a great little method. We seen this? Okay, now we only have to do around 50 more of them, so buckle up. Say so. Okay, I think I got the hang of this. I take my dumpling here and with the index finger only, I just kind of move it along the fork. Each time I was shaping one of these, uh, it would have been better than the one I did prior, so it is just improving. Never give up. Would you please join me over at the stove? Let's do it. 
It's go time. All right, let's switch topics here to the sauce. I had this on a low heat for a while now while I was <coughs> while I was fiddling around with the gnocchi. I found it very watery at the start, but it has reduced down to something glorious. And I've been checking seasoning on it, you know, here and there adding a little salt if it needs it, just like a little bit, but not too much because it's absolutely perfect. More on that later, but let's just put this aside. So I have this pot of boiling water that I've prepped in advance. Generously salt up this water. Let's take a couple of my ugliest ones and I'm gonna drop them in. So I'm gonna leave them in there until they start floating to the surface and then I wait 10 seconds. If they're too floury, which they may have been, question, that means I gotta add two to three seconds onto that 10 seconds after they've risen to the surface. Capiche? So I forgot to mention that the last time I made gnocchi was uh, a Julia Child recipe that I did not very much enjoy. It was very confusing. They gotta swell up and like double in size. No. This is the strangest dish. <laughs> Am I missing something? So here I am again, standing in the exact same spot, doing it all over again. I put my money on this one though. All right, so let's gather all our troops, the ones that are gonna go in. And let's go, 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 go. Remember that thing in the book she said about crowding them? Yeah, don't do that. I mean, you could just keep adding and adding, but you're running out of real estate in there and you don't need all of this anyway. Not right now, at least. Ah, just do it. Okay, cool. Once they rise to the surface, 13 seconds. Scoop in some of the gnocchi. So with the tomato sauce, let's remove the onions. You don't need those. I was reading some article about how there's like this whole, you know what, I'm not gonna get into it right now. I was just reading an article about the onions, that's all. We can talk about it another day. Too much going on. So first, some sauce on top. All right, Parmesan cheese. More of these lovely pillowy dumplings sent from the heavens. Then we repeat the process. I can't believe I ran out of sauce. And the only reason I did is because I was eating it directly out of the pot. Like she warned me. And then of course more Parmesan on the very top. So order up. Turn them rapidly with a spoon to coat them well. That's the last thing you gotta do. almost kicked the liquor cabinet, but I didn't because that's the power of this dish. That is the best tomato sauce I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> okay, I mean, it's the best tomato sauce I've ever made myself. I don't know, I don't, I don't go around comparing tomato sauces all throughout my life. I would say that's the best one I've ever made. For so few ingredients, that tomato sauce packs a mean punch. Tomatoes are front and center, uh, just like an intense flavor of tomatoes. It's just beautiful. The sweetness, it's seasoned nicely, it's tangy. Um, my taste buds are firing on all cylinders right now. It's just like, it's making everything happy back there. And you can pick up the onion, which that idea of just like having it steep in there is pretty cool. And it's got like a richness to it because of the butter. So it's not just like a thin sauce. No, it's got some depth to it. I loved it. Soft, pillowy potato. Gnocchi, gnocchi, gnocchi. Perfect vehicle for that tomato sauce. Uh, quite, quite exuberantly pleased right now. Well, this was Jamie and Marcella. Buon appetito.